What's happening? It's Sir William, and today we're on another episode of Badass Builds with a 1987 Toyota 4Runner. This is Drake. Drake, tell us a little bit about your 4Runner. How long have you had this thing? I've had this since uh, 2015. I bought it in summer 2015. Uh, I bought my wife a, a 2003 4Runner and I kind of fell in love with them after going on the forums, learning a little bit about them. So I always saw these, you know, doing the off-roading out west. I had the soft top on it and I just fell in love with the look. I started looking online and I found a guy out in Polly's Island who had one for sale and I just couldn't turn it down. It already had 35s on it. It looked sweet. The torsion bars were absolutely cranked to the moon. It rode like shit, but it was awesome. I loved it. So I bought it. You know, over the past five years, it's turned into what it is now. So it's got long travel suspension, 63 inch rear, and I just finished doing a 1JZ swap in it. 1JZ swap. That's right. Yes. Yeah, so and that's out of what kind of car? So this one came from a 2002 Toyota Crown, but uh, it that's an engine that's run from like 1989 up until I think the mid uh, early 2000s. Um, so there's a lot of cars that came in, but I like to tell people it came out of a Supra because it sounds cooler. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you get a Supra swap. That's right, man. That's yeah. right. I'm gonna put a Supra, strip, Supra sticker on the back of it, you know? That's what you should cool. do, a yeah, Supra yeah. sticker on the back. There That'd be go. pretty cool. How yeah. did you build it? In my garage. I have a, I have a two car garage. Um, I'd always wanted one and I finally, uh, with, with the new career I started, was finally able to get one. And uh, when things went wrong with the truck, I had something there to allow me to do it. So. I uh, pulled this thing in the garage, took everything out of it, put everything that you see now on it, and uh, pulled it out. And now it's it's an amazing truck. And um, you know, there's a lot that's done to it that you know was really difficult. But uh, I think that you know, basically, if you if you have mechanical skills or want to learn mechanical skills, this is a great way to start. Um, I have a 110 welder. Every weld on this thing, with the exception of the exhaust, was done with flux core. So it's something you don't even need gas for. You got the time and you want to learn? It's it's pretty easy to make this kind of stuff happen it's awesome and i'm man. probably with the 1j i have in this thing the, the engine was two grand the transmission and everything was probably another grand uh it's not that expensive to make this thing happen and what would you say the total budget is for the entire build over time i so probably far. have i probably have 12 in this truck um maybe 15 but that's you know scattered throughout a couple of years right? yeah over five years of replacing parts you know replacing an engine we're uh, having to do a head gasket at one point on the 22 re it just you know collective over the entire time of older the, the amount of smiles the amount of happiness that this thing gives me i don't think i could ever own another truck unless it was somehow i managed to get like a first gen bronco or something like that and build it up which you know i still wouldn't get rid of this thing because it's too much fun building cheap trucks like this is, is definitely where it's at and i think i'm yeah. gonna keep and it's it. satisfying absolutely honestly when i finished the truck i was kind of bummed out yeah <laughs> <laughs> like i love driving it but i'm like what do i do now what do i do to the truck now so yeah. like i said i've got a ton of stuff i'm going to do to it and it'll never be done now it's just the finishing touches i need to tinker on something right so, yeah. so this front suspension is uh blazeland long travel blazeland uh he's the guy who he basically takes the uh, factory toyota upper and lower control arms he extends the lower and then he makes this custom bracket you can see here that, that extends the upper and allows you to maintain the factory uh, upper and lower ball joints. So it uh, it's you know really nice. It has a lot of longevity. It also allows you to keep the torsion bar uh, springs, and um, it allows you to use uh, factory shocks. My setup though, I have a custom shock mount, so I had to modify his lower control arms a little bit to work with it. But uh, it is a fantastic low budget um, long travel system. Uh, and I haven't found the limitations of it yet, and I've jumped it quite a few times having some fun. So nice. Um, but if I do find the limitations, I'm probably going to go with a JD Fab or a Total Chaos long travel with a coilover setup and uh, keep the long travel as long as I can. I really like it. It's fun driving fast. You got some custom front bumpers up here. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty neat. Now you had talked about you were going to redo this a little bit. You're thinking about taking off the Stinger bar. Yeah, thinking about doing that. But uh, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, there's a lot of flexibility on the look. I'm, I'm, I'm getting some inspiration from a lot of guys that I follow on Instagram and on Facebook. So I might remove the Stinger. I might leave it. But uh, for now, I'm just going to leave it like it is and start doing armor elsewhere, and um, you know, get a look at the vehicle complete and then decide whether or not to remove it. But uh, obviously, with the intercooler, I couldn't run a winch anymore. So there's no winch, but uh, hopefully I don't need a winch. If just I do don't get stuck. Exactly, don't get stuck. I might end up putting uh, one of those hitch-mounted winches. So just put a little hitch receiver here and then keep it in the truck. 
And then if I ever need it, pop it in, put the pin in, and then pull myself out of whatever situation. And then you can move it to the back if you exactly. need to. Exactly. So that'd be pretty sweet. Yeah. This huge intercooler on the front here might not be so huge to a lot of different people, but on a Toyota 4Runner, it is huge. Let's see what you have underneath the hood yeah, of this absolutely. thing. So as you can see, uh, it takes up a lot of space. November of 2018, I was visiting my parents and uh, the 22 RE that was in here originally shit the bed and the transmission at the same time. So what I ended up doing was trying to figure out what engine I really wanted to have in this thing. And there were a lot of engines I had thought about. I was thinking LS swap or 3RZ, which a lot of people do with these trucks and they have a lot of success with them. But if I did a 3RZ, I was thinking, well, I want to do a turbo because I want power. 3RZs on eBay are about the same as a 1JZ. So I figured if I'm gonna do a turbo swap, I might as well put in an engine that already has a turbo and there's a lot of aftermarket support for. So 1JZ, there's actually a decent amount of people who've done similar swap. So I knew that, you know, I could actually make it happen. So the, the engine mounts are, for instance, something I was able to buy instead of have to fabricate myself. Oh really? Which okay. is really nice. Yeah. yeah, there's a company called Excessive uh, Manufacturing that uh, makes these mounts actually for a completely different application, but they just happen to work for this. Okay. I was able to reuse my factory cross member and the, the factory mounts for that. So I was able to use my front and rear drive shafts. Okay. So a lot of this stuff is so actually just a little just bit of support then for yeah, there was, yeah, there was a lot of about this setup that worked uh, right out of the box. So uh, the, the intercooler piping uh, and the intercooler itself was a cheapo Amazon setup that I had to modify only one pipe to work. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's it just a lot of this is work. This is actually a factory um, Toyota Supra uh, upper and lower radiator hose that I put a little um, uh, Junction in here to accommodate the electric fans so that I was able to reuse that uh, I made my own power steering lines But yeah, that not, not a lot of this was actually really difficult. The hardest part obviously was was the wiring Yeah, and uh, I mean even that was probably easier than it than it can be for a lot Toyota, of Toyota Toyota. Yeah, yeah it so. wasn't that bad that's pretty neat, man. Yeah. Now, how much horsepower are you putting out with this? So from the factory, this thing had about 290. Um, I'm thinking with the three inch exhaust I have on here and the front mounted intercooler that I have, I'm kissing 200, maybe a little bit over 200. I'm sorry, kissing 300, maybe a little over 300. Even if it's even if it's 250, the butt dyno tells me that it's fantastic. So I don't really. Well, I mean, care. what did they come with stock? Like 150? This had 116 from yeah. the factory, <laughs> yeah. and with the 35s, it might have had like 85 to yeah. the tires. Like so. Now, it, was it re-geared or anything for the 35s? Right. So I have I have 48s front and rear. Okay. Uh, I have a limited slip front, and I have a um, Yukon Grizzly locker in the back. Okay. So it it has accommodated the 35s, but it still is a lot of loss due to the, the inertia. inertia. Yeah. So um, yeah, this thing has done a great job of, of basically making it sporty and yeah. a little fun. It's making it sporty, AKA making it run like it's supposed to run. Exactly. <laughs> That's really cool, man. And it looks clean. It looks Thank you. really good. Yeah, yeah, I tried to make it look nice. There's a, there's a lot of stuff that I have to go back and uh, and clean up, um, which you know doesn't really bother me. I really just wanted to drive this thing again. It had been almost a year and a half since I drove it yeah. last, and I was like, screw it. I'm gonna throw everything at it, get it back on the road. Yeah. So. And it drives because we drove oh, yeah. it here. Oh yeah. Well, yeah, now man. we just need to go put it on the trail. Absolutely, man. So one thing about the Carolina guys mm. that seems to be rather popular is you know, the man? fact that. We like to just go bash the shit out of our vehicles mm. without any kind of side protection at all. <laughs> yeah. So now you've got some plans for side protection though. Yeah, so I have some uh, I have some square tube at home that's quarter wall, but uh, it's a little thick. I'm thinking about building uh, some sliders out of those, but um, I may, you know, we got a, we got a stimulus uh, check coming in, so I may get myself a tube bender all right. and, uh, and make some nice round tube sliders for this thing as well as a rear bumper. Uh, I don't want to damage this thing. Uh, I yeah. did put a lot of work in getting rid of all the rust on it and uh, making the inside, you know, last, making the body last. So if I can keep the rockers from getting damaged, I, I, I'd like to. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I'm looking forward to see how you do that. I would guess that you're just going to put them straight up into the frame right yeah, so there. Yeah, so make some plates, tie them straight into the frame, uh, weld them in, no bolt-on ones because... Uh, it's going to be too difficult for me to make the bolt-on ones. Yeah. I want it to be rigid, and honestly, having some side impact protection just from the sliders would be awesome, keeping cars from, from slamming into the body if, oh, if, yeah. if I do get in an intersection. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, um, now, you've got the soft top on here, and we talked about that a little bit. Take us through what you were talking about as far as the soft top versus that fiberglass top. So these trucks are pretty narrow from the factory. They're pretty narrow, and they have a very heavy soft, I'm sorry, very heavy fiberglass top on them. 
and um, I never had issues rolling over. I came really close one time and uh, the look with the soft top plus the weight savings, I really wanted to make it happen. So this soft top is from Soft Topper, a company out of Colorado. A lot of guys are really happy with it and I've had nothing but you know great things to say about them. This thing is fantastic. Awesome. It doesn't leak and it takes me about 30 seconds to roll up the sides to get it really know, yeah ready for summer it's it's awesome setup so nice now uh, you have a roll bar in there did the roll bar come factory yeah or? yeah toyota Sweet. took care of us man so they they put a roll bar in their factory it actually has mounts for uh three-point seat belts too so i'm wow. actually right now uh adding some three-point seat belts on there to be a little safer instead of just a lap belt yeah that'd be um, pretty cool so i've got the kids seats in there right now uh, my wife and I have another one on the way, and I tested already. I can fit three seats back there, <laughs> so I don't have to get rid of the truck, which Sweet. is nice. When I get when I make the cage, I'm gonna get rid of that roll bar and yeah. um, you know use it for something else. I don't now, know. are you gonna make like an exo cage, or are you gonna, is it gonna be all internal? Full internal. It's okay. gonna be the full length of the uh, interior, and uh, like we said earlier, I'm gonna tie in the tire carrier to the rear of the cage, yep. just so I have a little bit more strength. I don't want to jump this thing and have my my bumper bend and smack the body at some point so i want it to be nice and rigid yeah. uh, this thing's also a little front end heavy with the very heavy engine and right. transmission that's in it so i need to put a little more weight in the rear uh we talked about the engine a little bit but i didn't talk about the transmission i had to get a beefier transmission to handle the power from this and the r150f from uh, a late model sorry not late model but like late 90s uh, Forerunners Tacomas and T100s has the right input shaft length and the right bolt pattern on the front to mate to an R154 bell housing. Yeah. So I was able to do a little bit of shuffling of Toyota parts, and everything is factory Toyota behind the transmission uh, behind the engine. Uh, so now is that a four speed or five speed? It's or? a five speed. Five speed. Nice. It's five speed. It uh, and it's got the chain transfer case, but I have a um, a gear driven transfer case at home. I'm gonna swap in when I get the adapter plate. Um, but yeah, dude, it's it's yes. awesome because now I don't have a custom part that I have to replace if something right, breaks. Right, right. So yeah. you can just order a part for whatever yeah. truck you... That's awesome. Yeah, man. man. Have you done any work on the inside? Uh, well, when I got it, it did not have carpet. So I've done uh, carpet to it. Um, I've done seats. I've done... Uh, I removed the center console and put a uh, ammo can console, but I had to take it back out, so it's not in there right now. And, dude, that uh, thing is easy to put up. Yeah, dude, it takes no time. That's but, awesome. And then you're making me want to get an old Forerunner now. They're great, man. Yeah. You should, if you want to, man, you can go for a ride. We can take you around it real quick. Then I'd really want one. That's like riding on a motorcycle, you know? Yeah, man. I got a little, you know, cheapo uh, radio. The carpet has been a huge game changer for road noise. It's nice and quiet when I drive around. Um, I'm looking to get some PRP seats. I've got the typical uh, rips in the driver's side seat from getting in and out. Um, Boost gauge, oil pressure gauge, water temp gauge. I'm actually going to put in the um, the tech, I'm sorry, the inclinometer and um, altimeter there. So I'm going to take that whole gauge uh, section out, put in a plexiglass replacement, get some uh, a vinyl sticker to go yeah. over it that looks exactly like that, but cut holes for the new gauges so it looks oh, like that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, I think so. Um, I don't actually need those, so they're yeah, just. Do they still work? Though? Oh, they work great. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, man. man. Okay, so no center console. Is that, did they come with a center console? Or? They did. This one had a, a, there are two different center consoles they came with, but this one had the double tier. I didn't like it because it didn't lock and this thing had a soft top, so someone could get in and take stuff. So I actually got a, an ammo can mm -hmm. for uh, 240 rounds mm -hmm. and um, basically bolted it down, locked one side with a bolt, I'm sorry, bolted one side and then put a little lock tab on the other side so now I can store all the stuff I don't want stolen out of this truck oh, sweet. and not have to worry about it so GPS and things like that why do we have two door handles here look at that yeah so passengers actually have a way to get out so they push down on this thing right here on the back yeah pull the seat forward and they can reach this instead of having to reach all the way forward to grab that so the passenger can't get stuck yeah. in boy yeah. Toyota cares don't they no, they're they thinking just... about you right there yeah, it's That's awesome. pretty nifty. Yeah. On the back here, the only thing you've really got done is just the uh, the custom bumper, but you're going to redo the custom bumper with a little thicker metal, you said. Yeah, this is very thin tubing. When I bought it, it, it came with this bumper, and uh, it had rubber caps on the end, and I didn't realize how thin the little wall was. So I was recovering a buddy of mine uh, from a really nasty spot he got in, and I had to get some, you know, get close to him so I could get some speed up, and I backed into him a little bit, and I thought my bumper wouldn't give, but it did. It gave very easily, so... Uh, yeah, I want to replace this, incorporate a tire carrier, uh, raise it up a little bit because right now it hangs pretty low. That and the hitch also hang pretty low. 
Um, so it's can you tow with it? I can. Okay. I can tow it, especially with the power I have now. Yeah. I can tow with it. I never tried towing with the 22 RE, but yeah. I want to get a little, you know, little small camper and, yeah. and tow that to the little pod parks. camper. Yeah, yeah. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, man. Well, that's pretty sweet. Now, and the back tailgate just comes down. Yeah, so just like a regular tailgate. Just like a truck, man. So. I am really digging this soft top idea. I've seen some uh, some renderings of a fifth gen with a soft top. It looks so cool. Yeah. Well, so what I was thinking about doing was popping the top and then making it lift up for yeah. like a camper. That would be that would be really yeah. cool. Yeah. But this, like the old vans. Yeah. Yeah, man. But this right here is really cool. You got a lot of room back here. I do. You I have full on dogs. truck bed. Yeah. So when you fold down those seats, they fold absolutely flat with this, and it's six feet to the back, so it's basically like having a six-foot bed on this thing. Sweet. It's really nice. The only gripe I have about it is that the ro this roll bar narrows it so much that you can't fit a lot of things that you'd like to fit back here, yeah. but it's worth it for the safety. I know we talked about the long travel suspension up front. You're probably going to go something like a, a, a Total Chaos, maybe, or something like that if later I on. Find the, if I find the limitations of this setup, um, right now, the, the thing's comfortable. Um, it takes jumps like I want it to. All the parts are on it are really easy to replace and I haven't had any issues with strength in the arms. Um, the only thing I might want to do is if I start hucking it a little higher, uh, bringing it out west or something like that, uh, I want to do co coilovers because I don't yeah. want my torsion bars to be a limitation. Um, so in that case, I'll want to go with a Total Chaos or a JD Fabrication. Something but like the that. one thing is for sure about this truck is it will be hooked over some jumps. I like jumping it, man. It's yeah. fun. <laughs> it's, it really is. And it's stupid because I used to live in California and I, I wasn't into this stuff back then. I had hot rods. I had a, I had a Camaro and a, a little truck that I worked on. And then I moved out to the East Coast and then I realized that jumping stuff is super fun. Way and, fun. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So uh, I take it, you know, a little bit of rock crawling too and, and trails and stuff, but I like going fast. Yeah. So as the engine and, and uh, right yeah. yeah well you'll be able Suspension to do it yeah these engines have been known to send these things pretty fast down the road yeah there's a guy i think drag week last year <laughs> yeah. who went tens with one yeah. yeah yeah so that's awesome man so for the rear of this thing i want to do uh, a stronger axle so this has the factory ifs four cylinder axle in it and um it's been great but I'm a little worried with the power this thing puts out and what it will put out eventually when I start throwing more power at it, that it'll snap the ring and pinion. Yeah. Uh, so I'm thinking about doing a nine inch swap or even going bigger with a 14 bolt uh, and just throwing it under there. I don't think I'll go much bigger than 35s, maybe 37s. You, uh, I, I'm a firm believer 35s, anything more than 35s, you meant to get stuck. Yeah, yeah. It's just, like these have been great. I've never been stuck with this truck. It's yeah. so, it's nice and light. It never gets stuck in mud holes. I mean, obviously if I tried really hard, I could get it stuck, Sure. but I like to play it safe when it comes to- And you're locked in the rear with a mechanical locker. Yeah, yeah, it's got a Grizzly locker, so it's auto all the time. It's, uh, yeah. when I go around- I turns, like those. Yeah, there go. yeah. Uh, it's funny when it when it'll automatically load though when I'm going off. Some pe people think my truck breaks or something yeah. like that. They'll like look at me like it's kind of like an old Chevy mechanical lock where it shoots it over. Yeah. Exactly. And, and the, then the front you have locking hubs. Locking hubs and a limited slip front differential. So it's got a true track uh, huh. limited slip in the front. Yeah. So uh, wow. I have power to all four wheels. It's got a typical uh, J shift transfer case, uh, right? Yep. yep. It's got the. Um, so it's got the chain drive chain transfer case uh, from like a 93 4Runner. Um, a little bit weaker than the than the uh, gear driven one. So I'm gonna upgrade that eventually if it ever breaks. Uh, if it doesn't break, then there's- You'd probably no break an axle before you break yeah, that. Yeah, probably. I would imagine. Um, and I honestly don't need four wheel drive that often. And when I'm in four wheel drive, I'm going slow. So yeah, um, probably yeah. isn't that much of an issue. But there isn't a lot of aftermarket support for them. So I can't really reduce my, uh, my ratios in it. So I might go, or I want to go uh, gear driven with a 4.7 in it just to have that really low, uh, low gear. I had to run spacers to get the track width right. So it's got these massive spacers from Trail Gear, which, as I said, I've jumped it several times. I haven't had still issues haven't with it. Had, yeah. But it's still a concern, so I need to make it. So I wider. take my previous statement back. The weak point will not be the axle first. It'll probably be those spacers. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe we don't know. <laughs> you haven't really taken any trips or anything like that on it yet. Yeah, I need to go on my first shakedown. What's run. the first? Yeah, what's the first shakedown run? What are you planning on doing? Where, wherever anybody else who wants to go with me goes. Well, dude, let's let's take this thing out. And let's go hit some trails. Hell yeah, man. Let's do it. Alright, 
so now that you've taken it to Gulch's, how's it go? Dude, it's awesome. Uh, definitely need to uh, beef up the steering a little bit. Uh, there's a little bit of play there, but uh, apart from that, man, it just it just pulled. And it it just great. works. Yeah, the power is there. It's just fantastic, man. It's such a huge improvement over the 22RE that was in before. So we're gonna go to URE when it opens back up, and I'm gonna have a little more fun there with them. We'll do some camping. Yeah. And uh, hit some hit some light trails. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, cool, man. I'm glad you take this thing out and you beat it up a little bit. Hell yeah. yeah I can't wait to see you beat it up some more. All right. Thanks, man.